Hey everybody, this is Matthew Movies coming at you with my review of Toy Story 2, the 1999 Pixar film that is their first sequel, their third film overall, which is, I think is pretty incredible that their third film was already a sequel, but hey, if you make a movie as good as Toy Story, I don't, I completely understand you going back to the bucket on that one. So this is a movie that I actually feel like is somehow actually a little bit underrated. Now don't get me wrong, obviously the Toy Story movies get a whole lot of credit, and deservedly so, I think they're very, very well made films, but this is definitely the one that is considered the worst of the three, three and I, I don't even think that that's actually inaccurate, but I think it's better than some people give it credit for, at least for me it is. I have a lot more fun with it than maybe other people do. I mean, there are definitely moments in it that just absolutely appeal to me on every level, and also things that they introduced to this, this, this series of films that I think are absolutely exceptional, and for me, actually, there's two of the, my favorite moments in the franchise by far exist in this film. They're two of the moments that stick with me what, let me put it this way. When I think of Toy Story, these two movies, these two scenes come to me absolutely first, without question, before anything in Toy Story and before anything in Toy Story Three, which I think speaks volumes to to their to their worth to the franchise. And I know that I'm just one person, and that's just my opinion. But hey what I'm here to talk about. So one of the major things right off the hop that I think makes this movie so, so much better is the introduction of Jesse, the uh, female counterpart of Woody, the, the, the female character, the female lead character. Because up until this, I mean, the, the previous film did definitely did not have a female lead. I mean, the closest was Bo Peep, but she's far from it. She just showed up here or there. The, I think, I think, as a father of a young girl, I think it's absolutely fantastic that as the film progressed, these this franchise, I should say, progressed, that they added a character for the young girls to, to really invest in. And, and, and on top of that, that she was a, such a well-written character. I mean, the, the, like I said before, there are two moments that really stick with me, and one of them is definitely, definitely hers. And that's when they have the moment where she's basically revealing to Woody the, the whole story, her whole backstory, and they, they play the Sarah McLaughlin song, When Somebody Loved Me. I mean, that just absolutely just like boom 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 I mean just absolutely tears in my heart I, I mean it's just so so sad like where she's so so content when she was in the arms of her previous owner and then discarded I mean it's just absolutely heartbreaking the way that whole sequence plays out uh, and, and it's funny when you're watching it because you're like well she's an animated character and even if it wasn't an animated character if it was real it's a toy and yet somehow it's completely managed to, to envelop me with such sorrow for her I mean it, it just speaks to how effective the storytelling in this film is I mean I, I think that by far she is the best actor aspect that was added to this film and I'm so so happy that she's there. I mean I, I very much look forward to introducing her to my daughter as she gets a little bit older but that's not to say that the originals aren't fantastic here as well. I mean the whole story with Woody where instead of uh, trying to in the previous film where he's basically trying to get back to, to Andy and all about Andy and now you, you see where he has this very very well defined relationship with Buzz and ha how loyal he is to Buzz and, and the rest of the toys. I mean and that was very very cool and how how excited he is to try to understand his his own character's backstory as well and, and be introduced to, to, to characters that were within the whole story unlike all everybody else because up until that point you have no idea up until the point in the film I should say you have no idea what, what, what inspired Woody so when he get, what gets introduced to the other figures in the line and the toys in the line that he was a part of I mean that, that was very very cool to see him kind of feel like he belongs in that situation not that we hadn't seen him but in the past, he, instead of belonging, he felt like he was a guy who was always so intent on leading, and I felt like always felt like that was partially because he that was his role, like the only role he knew. So to see him kind of be put into this situation where he was kind of being led by other the other toys and kind of understanding who he was a little bit more, I thought that, that was great. And then Buzz, I mean. There are so many hilarious moments with Buzz and this the whole the whole thing where he gets put into Spanish mode and he's dancing around. I thought that was great. And then when they introduce kind of his relationship with Zerg, who was a character that they briefly mentioned in the previous film as his main villain, but in this movie they, they, they go into that a whole lot more. They define their relationship. They make a reference to a classic film and then uh, what follows that. I mean, first off, when, when they, they say a 
derivation of the line that we all know and love. And if you know the, if you've seen this movie, you probably know what I'm talking about. The the moment afterwards where they're they're playing catch. I mean, absolutely just made me laugh hysterically. And then other new characters that they introduced, I thought were really great. Like they, there's the collector who who at first kind of seems like the ostensible villain of the film, then kind of takes the back seat. Right, and played by Wayne Knight, the guy who brought Newman to life. I mean, where he he's obsessed with getting the Woody toy, the, this this kind of nostalgic toy and throwback toy that he knows is really worth a lot and, and the way in which you know he doesn't see toys as something to, to play with but something to kind of put up in, in a box and then to keep keep for value i mean I, th I thought that that was all very well done especially as somebody who who know that there are a lot of people who feel that way about their toys or pop idols or what have you i mean i i, I thought that that was very well done and interesting to kind of to throw them in the, the negative light uh, and, and obviously they, they he's not just in the negative light because he's putting them on display but also because of the way he gets them and his definitely very morally dubious actions but but I, I thought that was all interesting and then they introduced Stinky Pete the the old prospector and of course Bullseye that you, that you saw with with Jesse but Stinky Pete when we find out as the film progresses is the actual villain villain of the piece. I mean, anytime I hear can, can hear Kelsey Grammer's voice, I'm always going to be overjoyed. I mean, the guy just has acting uh, gravitas coming out of his pores, and and, and he the, at the same time he kind of he had such a understandable motivation. I mean, he wasn't like a snidely whiplash kind of type where they're just they're evil for evil's sake. You understood why he was doing the things he he did, even though he hated what he was doing. Uh, I thought that was great but it, for me the other moment which i mentioned earlier there was two moments that really stick with me is there's that guy that, that uh, the collector dude calls in basically to p repair uh, woody and and you see him and he's got like kind of a whole apparatus where he 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 pulling him out he's painting him sewing him and all that stuff but and, and it's all just absolutely fantastic and, and i think the reason why it's so great is the sound design is just so stellar i mean like when he pulls out a, a, a drawer and you have all these eyes going around and the noise of that and the noise of the, the paint gun and, and the song i mean it's such a such a well well designed scene and sequence that just really gets to, gets to you i mean I, I i think the story of this film was great i think every i really really enjoy this movie a lot i mean i understand I, and i even agree that it is probably the least successful of the three but i still think it's absolutely fantastic so those are my st thoughts on toy story 2 let me know in the comment section below what you think if you feel like it's the worst of the two if not where you put it or three i should say if not where you would put it whatever other than that please hit that like button hit that share button it does awesome things because it'll let other people know I put out this video and they can come and check it out and let me know what they think, which is something I'd absolutely value because I love talking to people about film. And if you are one of those new people or you just haven't done it yet, please hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you can find out when I put out something new. Come and check it out. Other than that, have yourself a good day.